I know most of the students are probably trying to figure out how they flush that a, a gemstone for cast in place. So this is how to make a gem. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to write a module. And we're going to call it gem QD because it's a quick and dirty gem, not like a great gem. So once again, open close brackets, uh, sorry, open close parentheses and curly braces. And then we're going to define our object with cylinder, where center, center equals false. And then h is equal to the radius. Radius, the gem radius, gem radius. And then r1. That's right, you can have two R's, it is gem radius, and R2 is going to be just incredibly small, right, so mm, 0.1, okay. and then for facet number, we're going to have 100. Okay. And so when you design this, you just want to make sure that everything's working, and so we can uh, just clarify that gem radius, I think the cast in place stones are uh, four millimeters, so we'll say the gem radius is four millimeters. And just remember, this is actually gem radius over two, right? Because we're measuring the diameter, right? So our diameter is, is going to be four, and we want, we want that to be our radius. So over two, and then we type in gem qd and we shouldn't have to pass it any information and there is half of our gemstone so uh, we're getting a little error thrown here which means I probably mistyped something there we go that's not a real word okay and so our radius is 2 but our our height should also be over 2 and that's going to be a normal style culet. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting this information, um, you could theoretically, you know, download the gem um, scad that was posted, or you can just look at this diagram. And these are the rough relationships. So we're measuring the radius of the the girdle, and then um, usually half the half the diameter or the radius is also the same length as the culet. So you get a 90 degree angle here. Okay. And uh, the table is about 75% of the radius, and the, the height of the crown, you know, from, from the uh, girdle up to the table is about one-eighth of the radius. So we're going to use that to define the rest of our, our shape, uh, but first we'll sort of label this. This is from the girdle to the culet. That's the pointy bit. Culet, not the cult. And then we're going to do it again. And this is from the girdle to the table. Okay. And the difference is our height will be oops, one eighth, right? So one eighth of the radius right here. And uh, our gemstone radius will start out as R1, and R2 will actually be uh, gem radius over 2. And then that number will be multiplied by 0.75, which is 75% of the dimension. Now that's all good and fine, but um, we need to make sure that we can see what we're doing. And so when I click render, uh, you can't see the top of the gemstone. So we're going to take advantage of the mirror function. And that's going to allow us to mirror across the x, y, or in this case, the z axis. This is a Boolean operator. So you get ones and zeros, and one will make it mirror across that axis. And now you can see the top of the gemstone is formed. And I'm going to suppress this channel ring so you can see the top of the gemstone. All right. So that is we define 
the girdle to table. And if you're not sure, you can always click the, the hashtag or the pound symbol, and that is our table. Okay. So now that we've made our gemstone fully defined, um, one of the byproducts here is when you're when you're making this gemstone, um, you need to have the top section here intersecting. And so when we union this, uh, we actually need to move it down just a little bit, like 0.1. So use the translate function, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, and we're going to move it in the z-axis. So we're going to go 0.1 down, and I believe it's negative, so minus and then square bracket parentheses and those two objects should be touching if it's not you see a huge gap it's not negative it's positive because of the mirror function so now we have an intersection and that's a bit large so let's actually go smaller 0 0.05 and then we should be able to union this object so it becomes one part so union open and close parentheses, and then a curly brace, and then don't forget to close the curly brace, and then we'll indent, that's control I or apple I, whatever you're on, and then we'll do that one more time for the, the code. Okay. Formatted correctly, there's our, our little uh, gemstone, make this even closer. Right. Hopefully that's mathematically solvable. So now we have our gem cutie, our little cutie gem, and we can change the size. Yep, so we can go three millimeter, we can go five millimeter, whatever we need. So let's stick with the four that we have and uh, start playing with the object. So we've got to zoom out and we're gonna unsuppress channel ring. So now we can see it. And now we've got to find where our gemstone is relative to the object space of the channel ring. So at this point, I'm gonna suppress channel ring and then bring it over so we can start doing functions to it. So we've got our code for gemqd, and then we've got channel ring here, and we're gonna start doing some math. So difference, okay. But we've gotta bring gemqd near all of our stuff. So um, it's gonna need to rotate Well, let's see, 90 degrees in, in axis, uh, probably X. This is just a guess and check sort of thing. There we go, 90 degrees. And um, because it's in a difference function, it's in negative space, so you're gonna have to use a pound symbol to find it. All right, so 90 degrees works fine. And now we need to translate it in the Y axis. believe it's the y-axis, and we need to go whatever the diameter of the band ring is plus its thickness. So the diameter is 17, and then I believe we call out the thickness as 5, okay, so maybe 22. Let's take a look. Hmm. That seems too far. So if we're moving too far, we can look at the number indicators on the uh, on the axes. There we go. So it's moving fifty. We need to figure out why that's happening. So try eleven. Oh, right over two, right? So 22 over two, because <laughs> it's the radius, that's what's going on. So if we went to 17, that should be just the interior diameter. That's what we have. So now we've got to move it up the thickness of the band. So we would be adding three millimeters, that would be 20. And this is important. You need to make sure that your culet is not stabbing the finger of the wearer and that your stone can actually be flush to the surface. So we're flush to the surface. However, we're gonna to need to increase the thickness of our band ring. So we're gonna make this um, maybe eight millimeters thick. And we can still see our culet, but that means we can move a little 
further forward. Let's see if that worked. So our culet is up, but our crown is too tall. So let's see, let's try 22. Can't see the culet. Material is close to flush. 21. 20.5. Right. And so you can see the very tip of the culet that tells us that 21 might be the appropriate thickness. And there you have it. So the last thing you're going to need to do is then make a cylinder that cuts out the bottom here.